Christmas to you all. I hope you're having a wonderful day because I did not have a wonderful day. And what we're going to say today is very important because it's the truth. And the video shows it's the truth, okay? And that's what you need to remember. You can mock me all you want, but we have video evidence that this is the truth. So when we finished up yesterday, I had got to the big Ketherick Thorn fight, but it was like 5 p.m. here in the UK. I had things to get done. I had to, st I like overdid. I had people waiting for me that I had to stop. So I didn't get to just go back in and kill the fight. But I was pretty sure, and I finished my stream saying this, is if I'd known there was a phase two, I wouldn't have gone in with like half health and we would have just squashed it because it hasn't actually got that much HP. Uh, so that's what I came back to do the next day. And the only thing I thought about was, well, Isabel is mind controlled um if i kill ketherick before isabel because isabel dies in like one hit is the mind control broken right and then we could save isabel that would be kind of cool and I th that's what i was thinking about during the night before i actually came back to do this fight so i'm glad i got that break because on the first time i went into this fight isabel's the first person you see so you take her out um but i was wondering like i wonder if we can like do something can we cc her or move it to the side so i went through this whole fight and doing this i want to be clear on this added probably 10 turns to the fight i kept isabel alive throughout the entire thing i i managed to get her to go over to a side i counterspelled her comes i used so many spell slots and counterspell to stop her attacking me i tried to cc her i did all kinds of things just to keep her alive and keep her healthy and i did it that's the important thing the catholic fight was not a big deal after i knew what was going to happen I, I i clapped it but i did it and in the post cutscene, she's dead anyway. It's ridiculous. I, 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 I did not, and I want this on record, kill Isabel. I did not kill Isabel. A pity I cannot say the same for Isabel. She's alive. She may have been Ketherick's daughter, but she was my world in time. She's over there. Do what you must. Then we fly this foul place. She's just over there. Are you fucking kidding me? I did all that shit to keep her alive. Ten day after that. Catherine's and she dies. She dies anyway. Take it. Should mind my step. What the fuck, man? I worked super hard to keep her alive. One, I didn't kill her in the tavern. She got kidnapped. She was still alive. When I get here, she's still alive, she's mind-controlled, and I kept her alive through the whole fight, and as soon as the last cutscene plays, she's dead on the floor. What made it so much worse is that afterwards, I was like, I, I want to speak to her. And she says she won't talk to her killer. That's not what happened. That is not what happened at all. That is absolutely not what happened. But... By the by, we live with our consequences, and Isabel is dead. Dame's all sad because it's her daughter. <laughs> and I didn't do it. Although, thankfully, Dame doesn't bring that up in any way. Although, apparently, Isabel thinks I killed her, but I didn't. I absolutely did not. Uh, so, I, I rewashed my hands of the whole situation. I kept her alive. I worked really hard. If I would have killed her, the fight would have been infinitely easier and done in half the time. But, by the by... It's what the game says, and the logs don't lie. As we all know from our history of playing MMOs, the logs don't lie, and that is the situation we are in. Uh, so after that, it was the end of Act 2. It became very clear. It's like, now you're going to Baldur's Gate. I was like, oh, cool. Uh, and there was a lot of uh, exposition wrap-up. Interestingly enough, Halson has decided to leave me. Don't really care. Wasn't going to use him too much. Uh, he'll be a second playthrough character, but um, I'm guessing there was something I could have done in the zone. Uh, that would have allowed Halson to stay as part of my team because you can fully equip him and spec him out, but uh, he's like ditched. Jahira has joined us, which is cool. I like Jahira. She's awesome. Um, there's some, again, again, these Act 2 things. I, I am going to bring them up because I think they're important to people who like, this happened to me or this didn't happen to me. Uh, Jahira does not acknowledge that the Harpers are dead in her dialogue, which was very strange. Uh, and then the rats uh, shows up. The rats... I haven't seen the rat a lot. He, he's starting to interfere a little bit. Uh, he just sort of shows up and throws comments at me, trying to tell me what to do or whatever, which I never like, obviously. My barbarian instincts, my smoky instincts rise up. Essentially, the rat has become rat's position. 
He's just an exposition machine. He clearly is the character that's like, hey, here I am to explain everything that's going on. And considering you're now moving into Act 3, here's all the dialogue that you need to know. Here's all the information you need to know. Uh, so he turns over just explains about the Deadly Three, the Servants of the Gods, uh, and they want to control the Mega Brain so that they can ru- rule the world with their Illithid army, and um, blah, 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 blah. And Gortash, who is Murder Hobo, uh, and Orin, the Red, uh, are the remaining two of the three, with Ketherick being the third, who's now dead, and we have his special shiny necklace or whatever. Uh, and if we have all three, we can control the Mother Brain, and if they don't, then the Mother Brain will run rampant. I haven't decided what to do here yet, mainly for fun reasons, is typically in games where there's like a Lovecraftian style entity, like a Mega Brain or Cthulhu Daddy or whatever, I do kind of like to let them run wild over the world. <laughs> you know, I'm not going for like a, I don't have a goal as like a goody two-shoes ending or anything. Uh, so I haven't decided what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll just become the king. Surely with the world in my hands, nothing can go wrong, you know what I mean? Interestingly enough, Dame Aelin has also joined our camp, the Angel. I can't add her to the party, which I would. I would drop Shadowheart, probably, uh, or Asterion, one of those two. Karlak I am fully on board with, is my favorite character. Karlak is just so fun to have around. Karlak is somebody I would be attracted to IRL if she wasn't a devil, because she's so fun. And... That's what I look for. Somebody who's going to have fun and like be excited about things and want to go and do things and not give a shit. Uh, so yeah, Karlak's staying regardless of what's going on. I'm really hoping I find a way to save her because I now know that she's scheduled to die. But I assume she, even if she does die, I can send her to Avernus, but she doesn't want to go. <laughs> she's like, it's horrible. I would rather I would rather burn for eternity than go to uh, Avernus, essentially. Um, but uh, that's the situation. Uh, we then got a lot more... It was like an exposition dump here to prepare us for Act 3. So I'm guessing Act 3 is huge. Uh, because we also had Dame Aelin who explains to Shadowheart is that your memories are faulty. Of course, the Shah have messed with her memory. Uh, you're not an orphan. Your parents are alive. You were abducted and they like beat the crap out of your dad or whatever. I gave her an awesome new weapon called the Saloon Spear of, uh, Spear of Night. So all my characters have really kind of good weapons besides Karlak. Mine could do with a bit of an upgrade, but I can't even see me replacing Shadowheart's weapon at any point. Like, Sunbeam is so good uh, that I can't see that happening. But then it was time to go on the road to Baldur's Gate. Act 2 is done. We're off to Baldur's Gate. Uh, I got attacked uh, in the night. I got ambushed in our camp. It was a very weird setting where they were obviously preparing for this to happen uh, and went off back to the nether, whatever we're going to call it, where the rat is a mind flayer this was kind of interesting to me because i guess it depends on how your playthrough has gone but i remember all the way back in act two is meeting a felon i think it was called or a felium i don't really care that you're a mind flayer it's personality based <laughs> for me always in irl and in game is like i don't care uh you, i don't care who you are but um the rat is a mind flayer i'm kind of sad we're probably not going to see the rat model again uh, now he's exposed. He's called the Emperor, which is a bit grandiose, but he obviously had a big role in the operation and running of Baldur's Gate. Uh, he's very, he was a very big deal, and he was captured by the Mega Brain and reintroduced to it and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but now he's here to help us uh, and get things done. So he's been protecting us. He's a giant mind flayer, but he's friendly. Uh, but he then offered me the choice of Ascension to become... And like full illithid. Now I will point out at this point, my brain is complete, completely filled with worms. I have two little sections of normal pink mushy brain left. Uh, the rest of it is worm food, uh, but that's fine because it gave me a ton of upgrades and number go up, DPS go up, DPS go up. Um, I was wary of this because I did not want my. I thought my character might become uh, a mind flayer visual, you know, with tentacles and stuff. I don't want that. I like my character. I, I like the way she looks, uh, even with the missing eye. Uh, I, th- I think she, I, I like, I want it to look like that. Uh, and I don't particularly want to be a mind flayer squid lady. Uh, so I actually played this out. This is gaming the system a little bit. So I'm, I'm always going to admit that is, uh, I, I saved it. I was like, let's see what it looks like. Um, but if it's a mind flayer, then I'm not going to roll with it. And you don't become a mind flayer and you learn to fly, which is awesome. Uh, I just have some varicose veins running all over my face, which I can live with that. <laughs> I can live with that. Uh, that's totally fine. I can totally live with that. That's great. Uh, so I learned to fly. I'm absolutely keeping that as silly as my barbarian. More mobility on my barbarian? I'll take it. I could have... I think I had a dialogue choice to give the whole party the ability to fly. Uh, but I didn't take that. I, I keep all the power for me. I am the number one DPS. Yes. Yes. 
And then it was time to arrive at Bala's Gate. He came to a little town that was on the outside of it. I think it's called Rivington or Rivingston, something like that. Uh, where I immediately made my presence felt by intimidating thugs, kicking people out of houses, especially the poor uh, that were trying to squat in people's houses. There'll be none of that. That's not happening at all. Um, and went to the circus, which was super fun. Uh, went to the circus, uh, dealt with a jinn who was... Um, scamming me very noticeably scamming me and started to learn for the first time and this will shock some of you how to pickpocket people uh because i wanted to get my money back and stealing from i don't steal in Baldur's gate 3 i don't steal unless they're all dead in which case they have no use for those things but i certainly don't steal from people who don't deserve to be robbed from um and so this person obviously did was scamming me and managed to steal his ring so you can manipulate the thing and win um i did that with karlak which then sent me off to a totally different realm again Baldur's Gate 3 is like this little stupid encounter at a circus, but they've put a whole bunch of content behind it that you may or may not find. It's got that Dark Souls vibe to it, which is like, hey, if you're invested enough, you will find this stuff. And if you're not invested, you won't. You may find it, you may not, but there's so much content that is here that you may never see. Because most people will probably do one playthrough, right? That's typical of a lot of people with a video game is to do one playthrough. You'd be surprised how many people will never play again. And you may never see this, even though this took hundreds of hours of work. You may never see it. But for those of you who do find it, it's going to be awesome. And I'm glad I did this as well, because uh, I, I, I kept messing this up. But once I got it right, uh, I got a massive trident for my barbarian that also can be thrown and returns to your hand immediately. So you can throw it continuously and just get the weapon back, uh, which is super awesome. So I have a massive, massive, I think it's legendary weapon now for my barb, which means three out of four of my characters have awesome weapons, like absolutely awesome weapons, uh, which is mm, perfect for me. Absolutely perfect. As the um, doppelgangers are now becoming a thing. So the rest of the circus was meeting Orin again. Orin just constantly showing up and just kind of, um the orin seems to be of the the mental torture as well as the physical of like finding out your weaknesses often she'll appear as somebody who asks you a simple question about who are your friends what do you really love things like that. and it's orin just like mocking you about it uh, and it turned into a whole situation uh in the circus where uh, the dribbles the clown was a doppelganger uh, and now I have a quest to find Dribbles' body. Apparently Dribbles is very important, and we should find Dribbles the Clown's body uh, to find out what's going on. But after that spot of murdering, things took a nosedive, because <sighs> I can't express to you via YouTube like how frustrating this was. But as I approached um, a, a little fortress to go to Gortash's crowning ceremony, where the Duke is there, Will's father, uh, who is fully on board with this, Obviously, my instinct was to kill Gortash. That's what I've done for the rest of the game. That's what I wanted to do. But after initiating this fight, and I want to be clear, I have no doubt there is something you can do here to win this fight. I have no doubt. Baldur's Gate 3 has a ton of options. But for me, this fight was just completely unwinnable. There is, what, 10 Steel Watchers or whatever that also CC you and a room full of archers and of course gortash himself who uh they they also have initiative so they go first most of the time and therefore you just sort of initiate the fight and just get clapped and they have tons of health and they explode when they get low health if you manage to get any of them to low health i think maybe there's something with chain reacting them so you get them to low health and they blow each other up or something along those lines i don't know but it was definitely going to turn into like an all-day session to try and figure something out and also it does i i, I read the, the the game was kind of presenting to me you're not supposed to do this yet and there's probably a lot more story and interesting things going to happen uh so you can do this if you want like you know if you're speed running or you were trying to meme on the game you, you can kill gortash now but he's really probably one of the ender bosses so play along with his ceremony through gritted teeth uh so i i ended up doing that um, but then, it, <laughs> look, man, <laughs> I found a little thief as I was exploring this fortress, a little, little, little goblin gnomey thief, who told me there was, he'd hidden his stash on the roof of the fortress. I obviously want that. 
so I go up the tower. I find a way of climbing up. I had to go out the fortress and climb up the outside. And then a guard spots me, who I then talked down. I was like, it's fine. It's all good. I then proceeded to be like, how do I get onto the roof? And I'm, I'm like scanning the, the camera around. And it looked like, okay, there's like some platforms you can... Uh, but one of them you couldn't reach. So I grabbed a box and put it there so I could climb on the box. Which triggered the guard again. I talked her down again. And she walked over and took my box. So I tried to pickpocket the box back because I needed the box. But she kept catching me, but she didn't arrest me. And then I came around the corner and jumped on the platform. And that set her off. And we got into combat. <sighs> So my plan was to jump up onto the roof so that it would maybe de-aggro her, right? If you get certain far away, it'll de-aggro and not cause a bigger problem. On the roof, there are three steel watchers. And then it also aggroed a room full of people that were on the same floor. And then it turned into me versus like eight things, including three steel watchers. So I started methodically working my way through them. And thankfully, the people in the building got stuck on the wall because the AI in Baldur's Gate 3 clearly works, and now I know this for sure, of calculating the distance between two and then finding the shortest path to get to you. And if there's a wall in the way, they get stuck because it's, they can't figure out how to go around and out. Even though there, there is a path to use, they can't figure it out. I'd noticed it a little bit with my characters. Like, you can clearly just go this way and they won't. But the AI clearly works this way. So, which meant I was in a pretty good shape, actually. I, like, I could deal with one Steel Watcher while another one was kind of walking around slowly. And then I could deal with that. And I was starting to kill the Steel Watcher. I was like, oh, this ain't too bad. Uh, this is going to work out because then we can go... Well, we could, then we can sort of heal up a little bit because these other enemies are trapped inside. And then go in the, that room and finish the rest of those guys off. And everything should be hunky-dory. About turn eight, <clears throat> the guard at the bottom that had caught me decided, because I had obviously moved a certain character to a certain tile, that the shortest route to get to me was not to try and climb up, which she couldn't, because apparently this character didn't have jump or whatever, but to go into a room in, on her floor. So there's two floors. I'm on the upper floor. She's on the lower floor. Where she aggroed... Gortash and his army again. I was almost done. I was so close to being. And it aggroed Gortash and the army. In the vein of living with our consequences. Although. Looking back at it. This was not a good decision. I figured. If we could get off the roof. And de-aggro them then maybe we could go back to a state of being good and we could collect the loot from the gnome and be good. This took three hours. You heard that right. It took three hours. It took three hours. But I will say this. I really, really tried some things that were very obvious. First, I tried to feather fall off the castle itself, but... It wouldn't let me jump onto the trellises or whatever of the castle. So that didn't work. I then noticed that in the, the which turned out to be Gortash's bedroom, that there's an upper floor. So maybe I can get away vertically because all the enemies were trapped on the floor below me. They couldn't get up to me. They just kept taking turns, which, which is what caused this to take so long. Is that I, if I get up there, perhaps I will be vertically far enough away. And eventually I found a way up, which aggroed another Steel Watcher, which I then had to kill that as well. I did eventually find a way up there and stood on a box up there. But in the room with Gortash, there is stacks of bookshelves. So all the AI stood on the bookshelves, reducing the vertical distance. And then I noticed over the flea button, which I should have found earlier on. You cannot flee in this area. But a stroke of luck happened. A stroke of luck happened. As we were climbing up to the roof, one of the steel watchers from Gortash's room did find an angle to attack Karlak and blasted her. I had Featherfall on from <laughs> trying to jump off the castle earlier. The attack knocked Karlak off the castle 
and she landed on the beach down below and because she still had feather fall on for a couple of turns she lived and she escaped that it was like the shawshank redemption coming across the line and no and the battle music stopping and sweet blessed freedom it was amazing and so i then proceeded to line everybody up and hurl them off the castle all the way to the bottom to get them free one of the ads, just one of the ads, a stupid fire elemental managed to find a way out of the castle and got me back into combat as I had my guys outside. But thankfully, no one else did. So when we landed, I killed it off and got freedom. I made it. It took three hours. But I got my guys off that roof and de aggroed everything in there. Unfortunately, <laughs> going back in made me hostile to absolutely everything. And I tried to save and reload. I slept at the camp to see if that would do anything because sometimes that changes things in the zones and go back and they automatically all aggroed on me and the last boss fight, or one of the last boss fights, it initiates onto me. <sighs> Three hours. And I just had to reload it. And I promise you this. Look into my eyes. Look right into my eyes. I will get that gnome treasure. Mark my words. It will be mine. 